Pleasure to have you on, Phil. I wanted to get your you on tonight after this story broke with Garth Lagerway of Real Salt Lake, their GM possibly uh, in serious uh, talks with the TFC and Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. And I wanted to get your thoughts as a fan, as a supporter, as a guy that has put his hard-earned money down year after year. Is this the type of move that you like? Or have you seen this again, as we saw uh, not too long ago uh, from DC United, their president making their way over here and making a disaster? Give us your thoughts, Phil. Personally, my thoughts, I think I, I do like this in, in the sense that he, uh, Lagerway has a relationship, from what I can tell, with uh, Vanny, Vanny working for RSL in, in a capacity there uh, with the academy and whatnot. And then you look at probably his experience as well with Tim Bezpachenko as, as uh, you know, the league representative on the general manager level, which is the position that he held at RSL or he still holds. Um, it, it certainly bodes for, for me, a chance at having a unified team in the boardroom, which I don't think TFC has benefited from that ever in its history. I think uh, some of the battles are happening uh, maybe off the field, and that translates into what we see on the pitch a lot of the time. You know, let me ask you this, Phil. You mentioned Tim Bazbachenko there. He is the GM right now of TFC. And to me, uh, Garth Lagerway has done so many good things with that Real Salt Lake squad on a very, very small, small budget. He has made smart acquisitions. He has picked up uh, players uh, to fill in certain roles, and he's done a marvelous job at it. Where would Tim Bezbachenko uh, fit in all uh, the, uh, you know, this new wheel that's going to start spinning now in the offices of TFC if Garth Lagerway takes over. Will he still be GM? I would assume he would. Or uh, would he possibly be moved on to uh, a different position? Your thoughts? I, I think he would continue to be a GM because I think that's something that, that Tim has always wanted and aspired to be. Uh, he's always, it's always been something that he's targeted. Uh, and I think he's shown an affinity for that job, too. And you've got a real chance to work with a guy like like Lagerway and, and just kind of learn from him, mentor from him, and take guidance from him. And, and if anything, we've learned that, that the one thing that has taken hold is, is that TFC are operating in this kind of consortium method. So they're talking about acquisitions. They're talking about player movements together, and they're making those decisions together. And this would be another cog in that piece a very important cog, as you pointed out. He's got a, a vast uh, amount of experience, and, and, and you know he's done a, an amazing job at RSL, and, and I only think how great could it be if, if he maybe gets a little bit more of a, of a purse string uh, uh, allowance. And that's why I believe, Phil, that I think he's going to be more hands-on than people believe, and that's why I believe he's going to be the guy that's going to be stirring the drink. He is going to be the guy that calls on the final say, the final shot of any deal or any acquisition. And I believe possibly Tim Bazbachenko might, might, I'm not sure, but might be relied on more with the USL squad coming up here, the academy, on and on and on, and let Legerway take a bit more of a control in that GM role. That, that, that's a very good point too, right? It, it's, we have to remember that TFC is, you know, at this point is, is expanding and, and as a supporter, I think that was one of the best things I've ever heard in a long time. It was much bigger than Jermaine Defoe coming to the club as the USL pro team and, and just being able to hold on to these players throughout their professional career, being able to draft them into our system and maintain them into a, a, a pattern and get their education and still maintain their rights and development and see these kids flourish. And, and that bodes well for all the youth in Toronto and, and southern Ontario and Canada in general. That, that they're going to be able to have, you know, Montreal and Vancouver also moving ahead with their plans. It's great for the sport, and it needs the attention that these guys are going to have to be able to give. They're going to have to assemble massive teams in order to make this thing work and function the way it's supposed to and get us championships and get these players uh, the playing time they need for not only TFC, but for our national team too. Phil, I'm going to ask you as the first guest tonight and all my guests tonight the same a question and it's simply this look if Garth Lagerway is the guy that TFC are going to have and Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment are going to get him uh, to sign to a lucrative contract and guide this team hopefully to a championship I have no problem with that but I got to bring this out there once and for all because today I got a couple emails and a couple texts and it's not the first time this is happening 
And this is what is simply out there in the soccer community in Toronto and in Ontario. Again, an American being hired by TFC, Maple Leaf Sports and, and Entertainment, in a high position. When or when are we going to get a Canadian involved? And, you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, Phil, maybe yourself and others included, Anthony, there's no Canadian qualified uh, for these positions. I got to tell you, uh, we've tried each and every year at TFC the American way as coaches, as GMs, as presidents, but never the Canadian way. Why not the Canadian way, Phil? Well, we did we did do the brief uh, experiment with Nick Dasovich, but I don't think that he was really given a fair shot, to, to be honest. But, you know, your, your point does stand. I, th- I think you have to be really creative and, and maybe examine things from outside the box. But one thing that I know with TFC is they can't even get the things that they're supposed to get right right. So I guess when you're looking at... Uh, getting these established ties, and they are American. Um, you go to them because they know the MLS. They know they know a lot about it. And not to say that the Canadian guys don't, but I think the Canadian selection needs a lot of creativity. And I just don't think that they have the confidence to make that decision on any level of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, to me, are a fantastic marketing company, but they're not necessarily a sports company, and that's what they're trying to become right now. Right.